Well, good morning, uh, Martin. Good morning, morning. Sarah Hansen. Um, we are here to to interview um, about your work that you recently published. So maybe as a start, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Martin Sarah Hansen. I'm uh, working as a PhD candidate uh, at Aarhus University Hospital, working with QFR, and right now I'm working with the Favor three trial, uh, Europe Japan. Great, yeah. And uh, so my name is Hans Reiber. I'm the chief scientific officer at Medis, and it's really um, a, a pleasure to interview you on the work. You you published recently a very interesting uh, paper about the uh, the performance of the QFR, the quantitative flow ratio, in patients with aortic stenosis undergoing uh, uh, Atavi implementation. And um, I this was published in uh, in CCI. And um, I think it's um, a, a, a very interesting paper, although still small number of patients, but I think the interest is, is really great. So could you really, could you summarize your, the findings of your paper for us and for the, 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 the public uh, that is uh, the, our, all of our colleagues who are now looking and listening to, you, to this particular interview? Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for letting me uh, present my research. And uh, let's start with the background. So first of all, we do see these Terry patients being generally older and more fragile. And therefore we thought, we thought it would be beneficial to limit the amounts of procedures they do undergo. And if you want to do physiological evaluation up until now, normally you see the choice between FFR or IFR, but we do see autistic significantly affect FFR due to the change in flow and habibic response. So therefore, post heavy FFR has been the, the, the regular choice uh, as we see FFR values significantly decrease after TAVI. Looking at, at IFR, we uh, see that IFR do not show a systematic change from pre to post heavy, but we do see intra-individual differences. Furthermore, if you, if you choose to perform post heavy IFR or FFR, there's the potential difficulties of engaging the coronary osteum with the guiding catheter to the mesh of the TAVI valve, and this can complicate the post TAVI FFR and IFR assessment. So in this sub-study, sub uh, we included 28 patients from a prior study, and they had already underwent uh, IFR and FFR measurements pre and post TAVI. So we yeah. took uh, pre TAVI angiograms and used those for QFR computation at our call IP in Aarhus. Yeah. So what we found was that uh, pre TAVI QFR had a diagnostic accuracy of 83% using post-heavy FFR as reference, and then a diagnostic accuracy of 52% using post-heavy IFR as reference. We had some limitations, of course, you already mentioned these, uh, these are a limited amount of patients. We only had 28 patients. And then furthermore, we did not have the post-heavy QFR assessment available. Yeah. So we did not have any information on whether or not implementing uh, a TAVI device does or does not affect uh, the QFR assessment. But we, in conclusion, we, we conclude that QFR may become a valid, wire-free, cheap, and fast alternative in evaluation of coronary artery disease in these patients undergoing TAVI. Yeah. So in, indeed, what we mentioned, huh, this is uh, you you got the data from a couple of sites. Uh, these are particular uh, patients, uh, TAVI patients, and and basically, if I understand you correctly, that you say pre-TAVI, you can basically with the QFR determine what the Physiological, physiological statuses of the coronary arteries after the TAVI, because apparently the QFR is not much influenced by the, um, uh, by the aortic stenosis prior to the TAVI. No, the, that's true. So, so it seems, based on this limited amount of, of data, it seems that somehow QFR is able to detect the post-TAVI FFR conditions uh, so mimic the uh, physiological conditions after the TAVI implementation. Yeah, and 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 with the FFR and IFR, that is, you you see differences between the pre and post TAVI. So if you do an FFR or IFR pre TAVI, then you still don't know exactly what the situation will be after the TAVI. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and and that that is of course a very int very interesting uh, result and and to be complemented. Uh, yeah, complemented on that. Um, is uh, what 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 will be 
I mean you always have to do this in, of course in, in larger studies again but would be the possible clinical applications for, for daily practice how do you see this yeah well so so as you said if we confirm this uh, by a larger study then um, pre tabacurefa could become this quick easy and wire free functional assessment of coronary artery disease prior to the tabacurefa procedure so pre tabacurefa would allow the physician to plan the revascularization based upon QFR derived from the pre tavi angiograms, and then if indicated, conduct PCI prior or period procedure or later at a stage procedure. Alternatively, yeah. QFR could be, could be performed online um, to allow immediate evaluation of coronary artery disease in patients um, during the tavi procedure. Yeah, is, there, is that a possibility that when the, the TAFI procedure is being done that uh, say the QFR indicates that there are uh, uh, some vessels that would need revascularization. That is, that that could be done during the TAFI procedure as well, if you know that uh, information. Yeah, that, that could be performed periprocedural. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's so that's that's a huge benefit. Yeah. Uh, also, the the thing about QFR is that one, if if the operator does a few runs of the right coronary artery, then while doing the runs of the left coronary artery a technician can perform the QFR analysis during that time simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. So it has some multiple advantages. Yeah. So what you, you did this, it was published, and uh, of course, um, uh, uh, um, congratulations on that. But what would be needed to bring this a, a step further? Of course, a larger study, but would that would you need also to collect data from multiple sites again? Or what, what is your ID and what, what are the plans in the, in the near future for, for this particular topic? So really, there's, there's, there's two steps to go, I, I think. So the larger prospect of trial comparing pre tavi QFR with post tavi FFR is the one way. But then also, it, it could be interesting um, to see how pre and post tavi QFR measures up so you want to do pre and post heavy QFR on the same uh, patient subset to see if there's an influence from the L6 stenosis on this technology. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so that is, is, is that something that you are planning already or is that beyond uh, your, your PhD work at this point in time? So right now, all our, all our focus are going into the, uh, the favor three trial. Uh, it's really getting, getting underway right now and we see a lot of inclusions every day. Yeah. So, so right now uh, we do focus on the uh, on the favor of three trials here in Aarhus. Understood. Yeah, but this was of course a very um, a very important pilot study. You can say, well, you you demonstrated the potential of this. And yeah. um, how 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 did your you and your team come to to this particular idea? Is uh, you had thought already about it for quite some time, or how did this evolve? Yeah, so, so we do really have a great team here in Aarhus, and we sat down to discuss in which patient category could the wire-free wire nature of QFR benefit the most. And we already looked at TAVA at STEM patients uh, earlier, so our next step was to look at these TAVA patients. Uh, as mentioned before, these are generally older and more fragile than the average patient going to the cath lab. Uh, so what we really want to do is reduce the amount of procedures they undergo. So if, 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 if possible to perform QFR pre tavi you would um, skip the downstream post heavy physiological evaluation of FFR and IFR so to reduce the procedures on these patients and thereby uh, improve patient care was really uh, the goal to investigate here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I understand that. But it's, it, again, it's a great idea. The pilot study, pilot study shows great results. And you got it published also in a, in a very good journal. And, um, and now indeed, uh, as you say, emphasis is uh, maybe at the favor three. But uh, when, when time comes and, and maybe more manpower available, um, and, and maybe when you're done with your PhD, this can be uh, another topic for a, a follow-up study and to show this on, on a larger scale. Yes, yes, I do agree with that. This this could be a subset of, of patients that could really benefit from uh, from the career path technology. Yeah, yeah. So in the meantime, you're working hard on your PhD, I suppose, uh, getting all this paper published. But this is yeah. uh, also part of that PhD research, uh, I assume. Yes, of course. Yeah. 
Well, thank you very much. I mean, it, uh, it, uh, it's a great work. And of course, we work uh, very much together with the Arus team on the, the Vapor 3. Lots of work to be done. And um, I, I wish you uh, certainly much success with your PhD and also with all the, the Vapor 3 uh, work, of course, all the progress that we want to finish hopefully by the end of this year. And, uh, and we will be in touch uh, soon. And uh, again, thank you so much for, for this interview. And um, and then we'll talk soon again. Thank Thanks you, a lot.